teaches through the flesh. When Jesus wants to order the church, he speaks through the apostle. They ain't gone. When Jesus wants to prophesy, when he wants to line people up and know what's going on in the church today, the prophet speaks by the unction. And it's the same unction that works in you, although to a lower level if you're not a prophet, but it still will resonate in your spirit. That's why faith cometh by hearing. Because once you hear it, oh, I got it. It was always there. Let me tell you, 1 Corinthians 2 tells you, you have the mind of Christ. That's why he said, you know everything. He's not lying when he said you know everything. You just don't know you know it yet. It's in you, and when you hear it, you know you knew it. Because everything in the mind of Christ was imparted in you through the new birth. Come on, the Holy Spirit's in you. You just didn't know you knew it yet. It hadn't been brought out. So teacher, so your fivefold office, what are they doing? Go read it in Ephesians 4. They are to strengthen the church, to bring the church to the unity of the faith. Why? Because we don't all know what we know yet. But when we hear it, if we're led by the Spirit, all of a sudden we go, Ooh, okay, that makes sense to me. I'm, I'm in. I've always known that. I've always believed that. I always believed God was a blessing God. Ever since I read Deuteronomy, I always believed it. They told me he wasn't, but I always believed it. Now that I tested the Spirit, he's blessing me. Now I know he's a blessing God. I always knew there was more to this thing than just getting saved. I always knew God had a destiny for me. Then I read in the Bible where it says that he's going to give me a new name. A name that only I will know. And name to God is what you are. Amen. So you can see how the spirit of Antichrist is trying to ruin the church. And you can see how you guys that know this have got to go out. We've got to go out. We're called to go out and gently show people. We've got to lead by example. We've got to honor leaders in the church, guys. Not because of, of the man they are. Because of the anointing of God and because it's his will to do it. We've got to teach our kids to respect the anointing. The Bible says that if you receive a prophet as a prophet, you'll receive the prophet's reward. If you don't, you don't get anything. Now, that applies to every office, teaching, pastor, evangelist. If the person sees the evangelist as a messenger from God, they'll hear the message and believe, and they'll get saved. If they don't, they'll say it's hocus pocus. It's the same thing. So the Antichrist spirit's biggest work in the church is to undo the truth of the anointing. A, God's people won't believe they can move in power. Because they won't understand that the anointing is on them as well. B, there will be no respect for men who are, and women who are leaders and anointed by God to order things. Not order you what to do, but set the church in order. There will be nobody can speak on behalf of God because we took the anointing away and said, Look, as long as they went to this school and went four years and could pass this test, they're called. Guys, that's pathetic. Listen to me. You know what it is. I'm not telling you anything. That is pathetic. I sat there an hour a day for 15 hours and regurgitated everything that professor told me. I did my flashcards and was able to say everything they told me about what we believe in our denomination. And I got my degree, and I am now anointed by God. Hmm. You wouldn't even want to go to a doctor that all they did was just do that and get by. And you think that's, and good grief, we bought into the fact that that's okay with God. The very word of God, the life that we live, the only thing we have that can take us where we got to go. And we bought into that. Oh my goodness. Can you feel his righteous indignation that the people have no will to suck up the word and be able to see what truth is? That we watch TV or whatever we do instead of putting him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. All these things shall be added unto you. And people say, I ain't never got nothing from God. No, you ain't never put him first either. 
Amen. I love you, man. I'm in the same boat. I'm in the same boat. But if we don't do something, we're all going down with the ship. Because this danger is to derail the church. That's why he's here. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says this will be done. You are the body of Christ. Where would the anointing of a Christ reside if not in the body of Christ? Where would the anointing, this limitless anointing that Jesus carried, where would it reside if not in his body? I read, Jesus has come in the flesh. He has in every one of us. He manifests in every believer. And we are his body. And collectively, collectively, we are anointed to do great things. Last thing. He said in the beginning, you guys will remember this. I'm not going to go to it. He said, look, these guys were with us. They were among us, but they went out. Right? You remember that? Now, a lot of people, we get, this, we get this interpretation that, you know, hey, man, these are these, these quacks, you know, these weirdos out there. Let me ask you a question, just where you are. Just think about this for a minute. How many churches do you think have left from where John was? Hey, look, John wasn't in the church at the corner, whatever name's out front. John was in full gospel Spirit-filled, baptizing the Holy Spirit, tongue-talking, miracle-working, dead-raising church with no name out front. So when John the Apostle says, they were with us, but they went out, I'll let you figure out what he's saying. But I'm reminded that my brother... And your brother, our friend, Apostle Paul, who we'll see and spend eternity with, said, let there be no divisions among you, my brethren. See, we were all once in the same belief system. Hey. And so when you take this body and you break the arm off, you break the leg off, you take some of the lungs out, then you got this thing, and gosh, just, he's so sad. Because he's empowered this body to reclaim the world for Jesus. He said, he said, son, come sit at my right hand while I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. We are it.